Hello, and welcome back. Last time we started applying my new fluid simulation to combustion engines, and today we're going to expand this engine model and build a simple prototype application that allows the user to design and test engines in real time. Before we get started, I'd like to thank BeamNG, Reyna, Meister, Joe, and Snow for supporting me at the Master Mechanic level on Patreon, and Squarespace for sponsoring this video. This is my company's website, and the only reason why I mention it is because it was made entirely using Squarespace. I'm a programmer, and at various points in my career I was a full-time web developer, but I wouldn't say that I'm a web development expert necessarily. Thankfully, Squarespace's Fluid Engine makes designing professional websites very easy, even if you don't have a web development background. In fact, this website was mostly made by my wife, and she doesn't have a software development background. This is what she thinks of it. Hey guys, Mrs. Anj the Great here. The website is still a work in progress, but getting it to the state was extremely easy thanks to Squarespace. I highly recommend it. If you need somewhere to start, Squarespace also offers a large variety of flexible website templates for many categories and use cases. After your website is live, you can track page visits and visitor activity through Squarespace's comprehensive analytics features. Head to squarespace.com to start your free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash great to save 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Let's take a look at where we left off last time. Probably the most common complaint I got on my previous video was my excessive use of reverb. Some people were worried that this would be a fixed feature of the audio engine, and I understand the concern, but don't worry, the reverb settings are completely controllable by the user, and the reverb can also be disabled for asset creators who want completely dry audio. I chose a heavier reverb because it just sounded more interesting to me, but everyone's ears are different, and the beauty of Engine Simulator is that you can choose how you want your creations to sound, and the application as much as possible avoids imposing anything on your creations. For this video, I'm going to use a different impulse response taken from an outdoor environment, which I think you guys will prefer compared to the previous one. Just because I get a lot of comments from people who are confused about what I'm working on right now, this is the old version of Engine Simulator, and I usually call it the Original Engine Simulator, or ES2D. I'm working on a new program, it's completely different from this one, and it's called ES3D, or Engine Simulator 3D. At least that's its temporary working name. The most powerful tool that ES3D will offer when it comes to tuning engine performance and sound is real-time editing. The old version of Engine Simulator is not designed for this whatsoever, and as a result, anytime the engine parameters are changed, you have to reload the engine and restart it. This is pretty tedious and isn't really acceptable when editing engines in a user interface. For that reason, all of ES3D's simulation framework is designed for real-time editing, even while the engine is running. To demonstrate this, I added a Piranha interpreter to this prototype application, which will make a lot of the demonstrations in this video a lot easier to make. Whenever the script is changed, it's immediately reflected in the application, allowing the user to edit and interact with their engines in real time. ES3D is not going to be script based, I have a whole other user interface that I wrote in a previous video. This is just for demo purposes because it's easier to implement than a complete interface and it's very powerful for the amount of time that I actually put into it. As a starting point, here's what the audio sounded like last time. Let's see if we can improve it. It should be noted that I've made a lot of fluid simulation improvements since last time, which we're just going to casually skip over for this video. Also, everything you see in this video is a work in progress, and I know it's not perfect, but the goal is to make it better, and that's going to take time. First, let's look at the cylinder itself. In the last video, the cylinder was modeled as a constant pressure source, so the volume and geometry of the cylinder was not taken into consideration. In reality, the cylinder has a finite volume, and this affects the shape of the pressure pulse that is emitted when the exhaust valve is opened. Once this is added, the sound of the exhaust pulse changes, depending on the size of the cylinder.
Now we can make the cylinder volume oscillate in a sine wave to approximate the moving piston. This is not how a real piston moves, but we're going to fix this later when we incorporate the mechanical simulation. With the added oscillation, the cylinder generates a partial vacuum and can draw air in through the intake tube, which was completely disabled last time. Up until now, the intake stroke was simulated by forcing the cylinder to atmospheric temperature and pressure at the beginning of each combustion cycle. The intake will change the way air travels through the engine, but it also makes some sound itself. We can apply the same logic that we used on the exhaust system and directly sample the audio that the intake produces and layer this on top of the audio generated by the exhaust system. Later, I'm going to make the various audio sources change volume depending on where the virtual microphone is positioned in 3D space, but we'll save that for another video. That will allow you to walk around your engine and listen to specific components more closely than others. To make the engine RPM vary naturally, we need to simulate the mechanical components of the engine. I took the physics engine I used for ES2D and rewrote it completely for this project with the new name Planar, which complements the fluid simulation, which is called Tubular. Now it's just a matter of adding the most important mechanical members of our simulation, namely the crankshaft, connecting rod, and piston, and then linking the volume of our cylinder to the current position of the piston. Based on the pressure computed inside the cylinder, we can apply a downwards force to the piston, which will allow the engine to run. We are completely missing a combustion model right now, and I don't want to use the old combustion model because it's going to be completely replaced anyway. So we'll go with something very simple for now. We'll approximate the combustion event as an instantaneous increase in the system's internal energy by the chemical energy in the fuel. This will happen when the piston is at top dead center on the compression stroke. The final simulation feature we'll look at today is variable cross-sectional area. I mentioned in my trumpet simulator video that tubular didn't support tubes that vary in diameter. The main reason for this is tubular is a Riemann solver which solves the homogeneous form of this partial differential equation. Effects like drag and variations in cross-sectional area introduce source terms on the right side of this equation which the solver doesn't natively know how to account for. I researched and implemented a few different techniques to account for source terms, and the final result works reasonably well, but it needs further refinement. It can be a bit unstable at times, and extreme changes in cross-sectional area can lead to the simulation spawning demonic entities. Taking the shape of the tubes into consideration is important when modeling things like mufflers, two-stroke expansion chambers, and other more complex ducts. It might also fix the intonation problem in Trumpet Simulator by modeling the bell and flare, but I'll leave that for another video. We can use our fluid visualizer to understand exactly what an expansion chamber does and how it helps increase engine efficiency. I've made this very crude, exaggerated expansion chamber just to demonstrate the effect that this device has on the exhaust system. The radius of this display corresponds to pressure. We can see that once the exhaust valve opens, a pressure pulse is emitted into the exhaust system. When the pulse enters the expansion chamber, it expands outwards, which also sends a wave in the opposite direction back towards the exhaust port. Expansion chambers are carefully designed to time the arrival of these waves in order to maximize volumetric efficiency. Their exact design is pretty complicated, 
but we might talk about them more when we look at two-stroke engines in a future video, which will be very soon by the way. I've already filmed a lot of the footage for that video. For now, we can do a primitive performance test of these expansion chamber exhaust systems. Notice how the engine immediately changes speed when swapping between the straight tube and the expansion chamber, suggesting a change in volumetric efficiency. The audio still has some quirks that need to be worked out, and I'm aware of these stray frequencies that can be heard and occasional artifacts. I want to emphasize again that this is a work in progress, and there are still many hours of research and programming ahead before the audio is where I want it to be. Regardless, I'm going to demonstrate some basic engine tuning with this application, like adjusting the idle, adjusting the exhaust system length, and adjusting the exhaust system's shape. Varying the base amount the throttle is open changes the engine's idle RPM. Varying the flywheel mass gives the engine more inertia. Both bore and stroke can be adjusted in real time, but I haven't worked out all of the issues with this yet, because it actually needs to physically resize things while the engine is running, which is a little bit challenging. Larger engines do also sound different from smaller engines, which is a good sign, and this wasn't always true in the original engine simulator. Here's an example of a larger engine that I made. Here's an engine with a fairly steady idle and a longer exhaust system that you might find in a car. I predict that this particular car frequently finds itself in a Walmart parking lot at 3am. 
We can try adjusting the tubes on the first example to see what effect they have. Creating a choke point in the intake causes the engine to lose volumetric efficiency. A similar thing happens in the exhaust. Increasing the ambient pressure instantaneously causes a shock wave to travel through the system, which we hear as a popping noise. It also improves engine performance. The opposite happens when reducing ambient pressure, which you can observe in real life if you travel somewhere at higher elevation where the pressure is lower. There are millions of combinations of settings and even with just a single cylinder and a very restricted set of inputs, there's a surprising amount of complexity to be found in this demo. If you want to try it out for yourself, it's available to all my supporters on Patreon. All of my patrons and today's sponsor Squarespace are really what allow me to continue doing this full time, and without them, it definitely wouldn't be possible. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you all next time.